Good morning. The WRC returns to South America. Welcome back to Rally Chile, Bio Bio. We are ready to go with the first run of the shakedown stage for you this morning. So welcome along to our coverage here and welcome along for the whole weekend of competitive action here in Chile. I'm Bex Williams. Alongside me is Julian Porter. And we're ready to discover what Rally Chile has to offer this time around. 2019 was the first and last time we were here. So it is a fantastic welcome back. The reception has been brilliant so far. The atmosphere is building nicely, as is Cali Rovenpera's build up to his run through Shakedown this morning. Ah, good morning, Julian, welcome along. How are you feeling heading into what is gonna be, I think, a pretty exciting event from what we've seen so far on the recce? Yeah, I think it is. And, and you think we were last here four years ago. What has happened in the world in four years? Absolutely. COVID and all that kind of stuff. It's quite amazing, not just in the rallying world, but in the world in general. But yeah, I mean, it's it was a brilliant event when we were here last time. Uh, the stage is incredible. All I've heard from photographers, all I've heard from people who've been out wrecking is, oh, it looks fantastic, it's demanding, it's challenging, it's, the roads are beautiful, they look like Australia, they look like New Zealand, they look like this, and, and everyone seems to be super excited. And I really hope that everyone out there will be joining us for the whole weekend to discover exactly what it does look like, of course. Across on Rally TV is where you will find all of the action from this weekend. We got a photograph last night, didn't we, about 9 o'clock, of the queue of cars heading towards the Shakedown region. And it went as far as you could see in this photo, just tail lights. What's interesting about this Shakedown, then, it's just shy of six kilometres in length. It's representative of what we'll see on Saturday. It's twistier, turnier, maybe a little bit more technical on Saturday stages. Friday stages here are blisteringly fast. But there is a little bit of technicality in some of them, but for the most part, they're very, very quick. And Sunday, from what we experienced out on the recce, pretty slippery downhill sections. I think it's going to be a really good mix out there this weekend. But to kick off tomorrow with some blindingly fast stages, what a welcome back to South America it's going to be. Yeah, it's great. As you say, we've not, been, not only been in Chile for, um, for four years, we haven't been in South America, have we? So, for that long. And, yeah, from what I can gather from, again, people, first two stages on Friday morning are quite loose, quite slippery, even though they're, they're those fast stages. But potentially a, a bit of a struggle for this pairing first on the road. Might be until stage three where they get a road that they kind of might slightly enjoy and might come towards them. But yeah, I mean, we're here at a different time of the year as well. We're here in, in coming into the springtime rather than going at the other end. We were here in May, was yeah, it? End of May, kind of May? Heading into, it was it late autumn? Yes, it? late autumn, so t opposite end of the season. And it's beautiful, the sun is amazing. It is chilly in Chile. It's always cold. Everyone's standing in the sunshine just to get that. It's got that winter sun feeling still about it. And that's at the time of the year I actually really like. I love that. Beautiful colours. But it's a little bit of a nip in the air. I think what's going to be interesting weather-wise, a forecast looks good this weekend. What you see now, blue sky, sunshine, that is what should carry us through the event. There was a little bit of overnight rain last night, though. How much dampness there will be in the stages in the morning because of the time of year, the dew that may fall, how much more slippery that makes it? But it does, again, on the on those stages tomorrow, does that bind the gravel together a little bit that might just aid Kelly Rumper, Yoni Helton, and they can become world champions this weekend. It needs a bit of a disaster for their teammate, and they need a full clean sweep, but it can happen. Yeah, it, mathematically, it, it is possible for them this weekend. certainly saw from day one's stages the mixture of surface because you do have it is gravel but when you look at it a little bit closer it's actually quite pebbly gravel it's a speed you find on the beach in sections
you're saying, it, 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 it being damp overnight, it looked damp from when we were inside the car. The car is bone dry, clean, a little bit of dust. So kind of all of a sudden, like, you've got that kind of, hang about, that color of that car and the dust doesn't kind of correlate to what we were thinking was maybe a slightly damp road on in front of us. And, and damp in the morning. It's so cold and, and humid during the nights that uh, quite sleepy. Is it good to be back? Yeah, it's nice to, nice to be back. The states look quite nice. Um, definitely a lot of cleaning for us, but uh, that's quite normal, so all good. Yeah, I think he's pretty much used to that now, isn't he? 403.5. Great to have you along with us. We love seeing your comments across social channels. Let us know where you are watching around the world right now. For some people, we're very much in time zone. For some, very much out. We'd love to hear where you're watching us right now. chat with uh, Elvin yesterday he was talking about how much he felt this stage really kind of represented Saturday more than anything else out there we talked a little bit about the the pace of, of Friday stages because that's one thing that's been talked about a lot this week is how fast this rally is going to be the organizers have done a fantastic job they've changed the route a lot since we came here in 2019 there are some familiarities for the drivers but not a huge amount I think that's really important as well. Uh, yeah. I think it's important on Busy every Busy for rally. the co-drivers, but, yeah, but it, yeah. it does make it more interesting when, you know, they come to something which is changed quite substantially. It's good for us. 403.2 is the time. It's quicker by three tenths. It's good for us. It's good for the fans. It's good for, like, everything, uh, apart from probably the co-drivers, if we have a lot of changes, you know? Yeah, quite okay. Uh, not too bad. Grip out there this morning, but uh, all feeling okay. Tell us a bit about what you've seen out there on the recce. What can we expect? Uh, quite a uh, difference in conditions, you know, especially Friday to Saturday. Um, so, yeah, uh, not easy to, to make the call, uh, obviously, on Saturday, etc. But let's see. Yeah, from what we understand, um, it, it was loose on Friday, certainly. Loose gravel out there on Friday stages, but there's a lot more on Saturday. So you really do need a good position come the end of Friday. You don't want to be anywhere near the front yeah, on you've Saturday got to have a good, solid, strong Friday, haven't you? Going on to, to the piece of the end days last guest afternoon. We were doing an interview with Silver Beach Ball. And we just had to wait just a couple of minutes just to, to set up because they were adjusting the front splitter, the lower rubber strip on the car, and they were cutting out the middle sector of it for the, to stop the scooping. And uh, it was obviously after they'd done the recce, they were thinking, right, there could be like this really crowned, cambered road. Okay, we need to take the, you can just see it. I mean, it's a little bit dirty now, but the middle sector, the middle part of that splitter has now just got a small little, which M Sport always seemed to run and always seemed to cut out. So uh, I got a feeling he's going to say something about the car is kind of out of the line a lot. <laughs> As we wait for him to come through, then just a big shout out to everyone who is messaging in to Keith, who's in Perth in Western Australia, listening to Juan in Ecuador. To everyone who's watching in Kenya right now, it's great to have you with us for the first run of Shakedown here. As we join Pete and Martin and hear from Thierry. Thierry, good morning. I'm sure it's nice to be back here in Chile. Tell us a bit about what you expect from the weekend, how good the car will be in these conditions. I don't know how good the car will be. I hope it will be very good, that's for sure. Um, yeah, 
first pass on Shakedown Down. Obviously, it was quite humid now, but uh, the grip was still quite okay. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's quite different from the rally. So you can expect a very challenging rally. The stages are really nice, but very challenging for the drivers and, uh, and for the cars as well. So let's uh, yeah, let's see what we can do now in Shakedown to find a good feeling and then uh, uh, have fun this weekend. They're, they're challenging in all kinds of ways, yes, they're, they're quick, but on some stages it's corner to corner, there's no let-up, it's busy, let's call it, yeah. let's to coin a Dan Barrett phrase. Yeah, yeah, there's a little group of them, isn't it? Dan Barrett, Seb Marshall, Stuart Lauder, and they're, they're busy. Busy. Yeah. That's the way Dan used to say it, that's why they pick up again. Oi Tanak hoping for a, a good weekend here, and of course, he was the man on the top step of the podium back in 2019. <laughs> we were doing some interviews on Monday with the drivers, and, and basically I went in and I went, ah! The current world champion of Rally Chile, <laughs> the winner of Rally Chile last time. He went, there's only been one. <laughs> okay. He says, don't get too excited. And I went, OK, fair enough. <laughs> 1.2 seconds behind the fastest time through on run one of Shakedown then for Oit and Martin. Let's find out what they've got to say to Molly Pettit, who's at the uh, the Shakedown stop control for us, chatting to the drivers. Notice his stem spot haven't just trimmed out that little middle part of the splitter and it's all really dirty. Good morning, Ois. You certainly have some good memories from this place. What's it like to be back? Yeah, great roads. <laughs> great roads. I mean, uh, I guess one of the best you can find uh, in the championship. So it's, it seems like most of them are uh, new this year as well, so they seem to have a good choice of them. Do you have a good feeling about the weekend? I will drive for sure. <laughs> Let's see. That's a really nice positive attitude, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. To kick off the morning from my big smiles there, and as you said, some of the best stages. And it, what I loved last time, and if you followed our coverage last time, and a reminder on the screen where you can follow it all this time as well, we were all wondering what to discover from Chile. We, we'd been out, we'd had a look at the stages ourselves, but we wanted to hear from the drivers. And they got to the end of the first stage, second stage, and the, just the smiles on their faces because these stages were challenging them, they were enjoying them, and it looks as if it's going to be exactly the same this time around. It's very nice sentiment there from Oit as we switch now to Esa Pekalapi. What he did say as well is this is they seem to have plenty of roads. They do. They're, it, it's a long, it's, a, it's only a thin country, but it's very long, and there's a lot of roads in and around Chile, and particularly in the Bolivia region, which is very pretty once you get at one of them. Once you get out into the countryside, it's very, very it pretty. The, the, the countryside is very, very pretty. That's starting to sound like a bit wrong, but you know what I mean. The, uh, the landscapes are amazing. The vistas are pretty incredible. The drivers will have absolutely no time to, to stop and look at what they see, but we did on the recce yesterday, and you have the, the Andes in sight yes. from, from the stages. You're looking at these snow-covered mountains and this lush greenery, it, it's so spectacularly beautiful here. But like I said, they're gonna be focused on just the stage ahead of them and not what's around them this weekend. different days uh, it's three characteristics every day is different so um, very challenging Friday is very challenging and your objective is podium there we go podium objective podium of course it would be the Cyril Abitbo was saying yesterday that uh, they, they want to give EP the best possible chance here he's stro showed strong performances all season and they, they, they kind of there's a good result beckoning in there. Got so many messages coming through on socials, which is great to see. I've seen people from the Canary Islands watching here in Chile, in Greece. You are very welcome along to our coverage of Shakedown this morning. And like I said, be with us the whole weekend for what is going to be a pretty special event here at Rally Chile Bio Bio. It's going to be a 
amazing. You can already hear it in the driver's voices at the end of the shakedown stage itself. So scrap your plans for this weekend, yeah. because this is where it's at. But we were, we were saying, it's, yeah, there's a lot of work. Takamoto Katsuta, 5.3 down on the quickest time. But it's first pass, you know, he, he was here last time in a WRC2 car. So absolutely, no one's been in a hybrid car. No one's been here before on Pirelli's at the top level. Because when we came here last time, there was another tyre manufacturer on these cars. So this is very, very new for everybody. Absolutely. Tammy Sunan and now, and Miko Markula. And let's hear from Taka. Taka, good morning. First time here in Chile in a WRC car, and now a first taste of things here in Shakedown. What was it like? Yeah, it's feels good. The is working well. Just uh, pretty stripping some places, but otherwise all good. What do you think of Chile? Do you like it here? Yeah, it's a nice place. The uh, stages are nice. Uh, very technical and difficult, but uh, it's quite challenging, so uh, we all like it. Who is going to be that one, two, three come the end of the weekend? Tami Sunanen has already said, you know, he just he wants to concentrate on, you know, pr still producing great results because since we've seen him within the Rally One car, he's had some really consistently good results. Yeah, fifth before and fourth. Well, that means I mean, that's he third yeah. this time, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, if you're going to go one better, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, the disadvantage he has in a way is that he doesn't have the seat time all the time in the Rally One car. But yet, when he's in it, he is showing such promise, such potential. Also, in the in the interim gap between Greece and here, Teemu Sun and Mikomakova confirmed for Central European Rally, which. I think to some people was a bit of a shock. There was a small hint because during Greece they were, entered him into a rally in Austria and we Tom were like, rally, yeah. okay, what's going on there? Again, part of the driver development, they need to know how good he is. That's a, it's a little bumpy in there it now, is. isn't it? Yeah, and you notice that on, on some of the stages, they, uh, there's quite, especially on the third stage, tomorrow there's quite a noticeable camber to yeah. each side of the stage it's like as if they've been molded out of the ground beautiful these stages quickest of the three high end i there son and but obviously but potentially there is some road cleaning or you know he's just maximized everything he's got compared to the other two Taylor, good morning it's great to see you back in this car tell us how the stage is the road conditions and your road position is going to see you this weekend I hopefully uh, the road speeds fail for me because I need to drive on uh, fast roads. But uh, it seems to be that there have been quite uh, some rain, so maybe there is not uh, as much wood from as I wish. But uh, yeah, I try to get to the good pace. This car's an amazing machine. <laughs> amazing machine. And finish, please. We switch now then to Pierre Louis Dubay. Listening to the official here. first time here, but uh, obviously the co driver next to him has, was here in 2019. That mega massive shot uh, alongside here in Newville that they like, amazingly just got out and walked away from. I got that dew on it. That's what Timo is referring to right there. He's saying, as dry as I was hoping it was going to be. Yeah, and there was a little bit of overnight rain also. Um, it should remain dry in the days, though. Big sky country, we will see beautiful blue skies and sunshine. But with the earlier starts, there will be that, that bit of yeah, dampness around. But I don't think that... I remember last time we were here. There was a lot of fog, wasn't there, last time, in early mornings and... I remember oh, the helicopter struggling to get up. Once it got up and above the clouds, oh my word, we had some amazing vista shots. Now, break what monster. Take a number 13 as his number. Oh my great clock. Yeah, Louis, good morning. Never been to Chile before. What do you make of it all so far? Yeah, it looked very nice and uh, the stage are, are very uh, enjoyable, I would say. So I hope we will, uh, we will enjoy this rally. What would you compare it to? Any other rally? Uh, 
everybody said a bit New Zealand, but I've never been there, so I would say, yeah. I th it, yeah, what they say is there, you know, what would you compare to? And that's what we were asking them a lot the last time, you know, just to get a bit of a bearing on, on what you think. But after driving through the stages yesterday, I would now say, this is chilly. You know, yeah. the, the, it has its own character. Um, yes, you can see familiarities of some other rallies within it, but... Yeah, when I was driving around the other day, I was watching Munster on his debut in a Rally 1 machinery. It'd be interesting to see how gets on. Huge, <laughs> huge weekend for Greg Munster. Yeah, massive. And, you know, when you look at it, as you say, you're driving around, there's some, like, look, oh, that looks like New Zealand, the rolling hills. Yeah. Oh, that just looks a bit like that urban area. It looks a bit like Coffs Harbour, where we were. I and think then Australia and New Zealand yes. would be the biggest comparison. But we are in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, big yeah, weekend for, for Munster and Louis Luca. Watching them yesterday in the service, and they were, like, learning how to use the jack. They were getting some little tuition from the engineers and mechanics of how to adjust stuff and how to change stuff. All that kind of stuff is brand new for them. How exciting, though, as a driver to be able to get an opportunity like this to step up to, to rally one machinery. And not only one, we've got two of them. We've got Munster and Alberto Heller. <laughs> I, I, look at, look at the reaction on his face. is classic here. <laughs> Big smiles. He's got a lot more power yeah. behind him heading into this rally. They just laughed all the way. They've just laughed all the way from the flying finish to the stop line. Well, let's hear from them with Molly. Brilliant. And another behind Rally One Machinery for the first time, Alberto Heller. Let's hear from Greg Watt. Good morning. I could see that smile coming a long way. So happy for you that you have this opportunity. What does it feel like? Yeah, it's just uh, incredible. I'm in the corner right so fast. The braking in the base note, it's a bit like too much rally too, you know, so we have to, to make it a bit early, but uh, so much fun, great. A dream come true? Sorry? A dream come true? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, being here, we, we enjoy already so much on five kilometers, so we have 300 kilometers ahead. Really a dream. Enjoy it. Thank you. That's a great quote, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've really enjoyed the five kilometers, and now we've got over 300 to go. So there you go on the board there, Rally Chile back in the championship. As we mentioned before, 2019 was its debut and it's been a long wait for it to come back. Just noticing here, I can't remember that I noticed it on the other three Pumas. Alberto Heller, he's got the blanking plates across the radiator. I hope it doesn't start to get a bit too hot, but he's got like a clear Perspex cover that hasn't been removed. Normally that is for road sections only, but hopefully it won't kind of like scare it or anything. But uh, have a, it, it's something that you see being run in Sweden, but normally on regular rallies, it's removed from the road sections. It's to keep engine temperature consistent on the road sections to the stages. Now, for, we mentioned, Julian, for Gregoire Munster, this is a huge opportunity, but for Alberto Heller, maybe we even go up a level, because this is his home <laughs> event. <laughs> Look at this. All these last two crews have done is laugh between the flying finish and the stop line. How cool is that? But this is what we want to see, isn't it? We want to see this enjoyment. He's staying in a motorhome, you know, in the service park. He's got his big, massive motorhome. We interviewed him in it on Monday. And he says, oh, if you ever just want to pop in, this is where the chocolate is, this is where the coffee is, just come in. We're like, you might regret that comment. Yeah, absolutely, you might regret that comment. <laughs> Alberto Heller through then, 421.3, but utter joy on his face. Let's hear from him. Yours says it all. How much fun was that? Oh, the best feeling in the world. Amazing, you know? First real contact with the car. I don't know, I'm in my home. I'm the most happy man in the world, I think. <laughs> yep, I, th I think we can all agree with that yeah. statement right now. Long may that continue throughout the weekend. OK, shall we take a look at uh, WRC2? Competitive again. Again, you know, I, I, I've loved the WRC2 Championship out there this year. I think a, a lot of people have. Jules has been exceptionally competitive.
performance, Devin. I know we're looking at Johan Rossell here, but have to give a nod to Mickelson's performance in Greece just a few weeks ago. I don't think I've ever seen Mickelson on such a mission in his whole career as he was at that event to go and win it. It spiced up the, you know, it spices up the championship in the sense that for him, he wanted to uh, extend his lead. It's still open in WRC2, but some of these boys have a lot of hard work to do now. Yeah, they do. Uh, Russell can go back to the head of the field, because Mickelson not, not on a point scoring round here. But as you said, what a, what a drive from Mickelson and Torstein Eriksson in Greece. Having had that really bizarre situation on Friday morning of, of three tyre issues in three stages, and we did an in-depth interview with Andreas at the end of the rally, and we said, what is it? And he goes, I was Pirelli's test driver for two years developing these tyres. He goes, I never had that kind of issue. They believe it was a left rear damper issue, that it wasn't bouncing and rebounding properly. And it was somehow the tyre was taking all of the impact. So not actually a tyre issue, potentially a damper issue, but they wouldn't know 100% until they got the damper back to Europe and got it sorted. That's Johan Rossell through then second in the WRC2 Championship right now, heading the field because Mikkel says isn't here. First time in Chile, how would you describe it? Honestly, the, the, I am so happy to, uh, to, uh, to be out in Europe. It's my first time. We will see what happens. Um, I think it will be a, a good weekend for me, for the experience. It's so crazy to be here. We will see what happens for the championship. You're thinking of that too, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he will want to take maximum points here. Mickelson's on 108, Johan Rossell's on 92. Gus Greensmith, who we've got here, you can see two victories already this season, is third in the championship on 80 points. And he's saying he's looking at nothing other than a title charge as well. We're really now... We're at the business end. Yeah. I mean, there's only... T <laughs> this is, you know, the 11th round. We've only got two more to go after this. I had to question myself yesterday where I was like, really? How did that run already? But yeah. And then you've got like Kaya Tanovic who's here, who's doing the last four, like he did yeah. Greece, he's doing here, he's doing the next two. So he's kind of like a dark horse out the back because he hasn't had many point scoring events. And then you could, he could potentially rack up so, you know what I mean, 120 points if he was to win the rounds. It's a good time on the board for Gus Greensmith. It's a 417.3 to Rossell's 419.7. Let's get Gus's thoughts on the weekend ahead as we switch to Sammy Pyrie and Emmy Malkinen. Morning, Gus. First of all, how are you doing? Good, yeah. Nice to be back in Chile. The sun's shining, so that's positive. What have you done to your finger? I decided to take a bit of the top off before I got in the car this morning, so... How? Uh, seat belt cutters. Touching them by accident. Don't do it. I wouldn't advise. Ow! Dramatic! <laughs> so, so what, what are you saying here? A seat belt cutter. It's something that's stuck to the side of the seat. You can see Sammy Priori's here. It's a white thing just on the side of the seat. And it's basically... If they're trapped in the car and they can't get the seatbelt off, this is like a very sharp blow that they can just completely cut the seatbelt. You can see it uh, when any lifts the pace number, the white thing down by the side of the seat. And he's obviously caught his finger doing something on it. Like I said, ow. <laughs> WRC2 podium is a difficult one to predict here. For me, the World Rally one is, but this is diff more difficult. Yeah. yeah. We've seen all of these drivers, the drivers we've seen through so far, with great pace throughout the year. Emmy Malkin's birthday, I think it was Monday, wasn't it, when she was on a test? Yeah, on the, on her and the Oliver Solberg were kind of celebrating yeah. together yeah. whether the team got them a. They had a cake, cake each. Yeah. Emmy's cake was huge. She was a good old cake, that was. I wouldn't mind her being there having a bit of that. It's interesting, uh, Alberto Heller, who we've just seen go through, he went to the Monday test, because obviously his brother Pedro Heller's doing WRC2. And he was watching all the cars, he was in stage, and, he, and his, he, his words were, that young Finnish guy, Sammy Paioli, 
He's fast. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. It's a 4.25 for him, though, on this first run of Shakedown. But this is run one. Oliver Solberg and Elliot Edmondson now. Sammy, good morning. A long way from home, this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure it is. Uh, but honestly, I like it a lot here. Uh, so the scenery is really nice, and uh, especially the stage is uh, on tomorrow. Road, also really, really, really nice, and I, I think we can really enjoy it a lot. I think you're going to hear the words challenging and enjoyment a lot this weekend. Yeah. Be prepared for that. For the eagle-eyed of you, you might wonder why WRC2 is running not in number order. But they are running in championship order for the first time this weekend. It's something they're trialling for next year, like the WRC cars run. It is something that they're trying. So that's not necessarily why every round we've done so far, they've been in number order, their seeded order. But uh, not this year. I wonder if WRC2 are going to get their, be able to pick their own number for them maybe next year. Maybe. <laughs> you know, of what's, of what's around and what's left. Nice Whoa. attitude through the arch from uh, yeah. Oliver Solberg. That's a great time on the board, 4.15. You want to run on that too, Elliot asking, do you want flat on that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, right, we're just going to go a bit faster, though. Yeah. Uh, Did you want completely flat on that note? Yes. <laughs> so far, my quite a bit. Good start. Yeah, yeah, car is very good and feeling is always very good, so uh, I'm happy. Tell us uh, how you find Chile. I mean, the first time here, great place, first of all, beautiful country, fantastic people, so uh, and the roads are very challenging, so it's going to be good fun. And the target? Win. <laughs> Absolutely, the target is the win. We're definitely going to have a little kind of scoreboard here in commentary this weekend and rack up how many times drivers say challenging. It'll be yeah. a lot. We might run out of paper writing it all down. Emil Lindholm and Reiter Hammerlein and now in the Hyundai. Just looking time-wise for WRC2 through here, it's Oliver Solberg fastest through with a 4.15. Then Gus for 17.3, then Rossell, then Pagliari. There is Kaito. And Matchek bumped into them yesterday, day four yesterday, after the first day of wrecking. And they've done um, the Friday and Sunday stages at that point. Yeah. And they were talking about, you know, Kaito's eyes were just wide with, with joy, really. He was like, it's going to be a good weekend here. <laughs> yeah. He built a long haul specialist as well, isn't he? He did most of the long hauls last year. Uh, again, doing Kenya this year, winning in Kenya, and now moving on to uh, um, into, into Chile. And we've talked about, you know, where we could possibly see the WRC2 drivers on the podium. Don't forget, on the website, on the app, you can vote for who your favourite to win the rally is in the P1 category. That is still active right now, of course, until the first stage goes live. So vote for your favourites. Let's hear from Kaito. Kaito, good morning. It's nice to see you smiling. How was that? Just for check, everything is working. So. We are waiting for the beautiful stages uh, for this weekend. Uh, yeah, amazing. It's yeah. a mix, uh, New Zealand, uh, Portugal, uh, yeah, and Finland maybe, but I wasn't there. <laughs> 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 there you go. He's giving it a, a mixture, and it's the ones that come out: Portugal, New Zealand, a bit of Finland. 
you will be able to discover it all, though, and you can give us your opinions on, on what you think it's like out there by watching the coverage throughout the weekend. Keen to see what Lindholm can do here. Obviously changed cars mid-season, went from the Skoda into the factory Hyundai team. Yeah, it really there, is. It? It's, it's kind of working its way lower and lower, it seems. But for Lindholm, then, 5.9 seconds off the pace of uh, Oliver Solberg's fastest time through so far within WRC2. What a beautiful light on the car. The early morning sunshine here. 8.35 in the morning. Emil, good morning. Great to see you back in WRC2. How are you finding things here in Chile for the first time? I like it. This stage is actually pretty really fun to drive. Uh, quite slippery. I don't know if that's the same for everyone, but uh, but yeah, I mean, nice and nice and flowing, and, and the twisty section is super beautiful. To drive, so I'm liking it. The sun's out as well. So what could be? What could it be worse? What could it be better? <laughs> Can't be worse. <laughs> Bit of a comedy moment from Emma Lindholm there. It definitely could be worse, but maybe it couldn't be better right now. <laughs> well done, Emil. That's Elvin Evans, you can see there. He's the fastest man through on run one of Shakedown this morning. Rally Chile. B.O.B.O. -B -O is where we're at for round 11 of the championship. What will we see this weekend? Who will be on the one, two, three podium come the end of it on Sunday? It's a long way to go until that point, of course. And there's the classification for you from Shakedown, that confirmed time of Elvin Evans with Rolf and Pera just a fraction behind three tenths of a second off that pace. Then Tanak, Sunanen and Lappi to round out the top five through the first pass of Shakedown. So as we head into this weekend, then quick reminder of how it stands in the Drivers' Championship. After 10 rounds, Rolf and Pera on 200 points straight. Elvin Evans, 167 points. They are battling it out for the title, of course. Neuville and Tanak, they still mathematically have an option of the title, but it would take something remarkable to happen to the guys in front. So we really are looking at Rov and Pera and Evans right now. So what's going to happen this weekend? Here are your timings then for today. In particular, we are going to be broadcasting the ceremonial start live this evening. That is kicking off local time here from six o'clock in the evening with the meet the crew session first, then the ceremonial start. And there are your timings for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's been a joy this morning. We'll see you throughout the whole weekend. Stick with us here at Rally Chile Bio Bio.